Welcome to the Dubcast with Dubside. This is a special guest edition of the Dubcast. Well, several years back, that would be before COVID, at some of the Kayak USA events, I ran into a guy who was doing photography. I think he had a drone and some fairly serious photography equipment. And it was quite a few years later, I found out that he has a website and quite an internet presence. And he's known as the Kayak Hipster. And that is how to find him online. Kayak Hipster. And he has been putting out instructional, um, like coaching type of videos about kayaking for quite some time now. And he's built up quite a library of information. So, for example, I did... Uh, an episode a few months back about dry suits. And the Kayak Hipster has a piece about dry suits, not quite as opinionated as mine. And since it's video, you can see what he's talking about. shows you the gaskets and the zipper and a basic rundown on the features and things. So not a bad reference point if you need more information. It is not a podcast, it's a video thing, so you can't uh, take it in while you're driving or walking or exercising or something. That's the nice thing about a podcast. So it's worth any any kayak topics. He's got a lot of stuff about the Greenland paddle, about paddling and surf, about kayak fishing. He's quite a well-rounded, knowledgeable person. And he's also, it's quite evident, a professional photographer. One of the reasons I, I gave up on the, the video thing is because I, I have an audio background. I'm a, I was a professional sound engineer, so I, I know audio. But the, the video stuff nowadays, my, my gear is so obsolete. You know, people are shooting 4K with drones and everything, and I'm, I haven't stepped up to that level. So I, I, I gave up on the video thing. I'll, I'll stick with audio. If you want to see very nice professional video, you can look at Kayak Hipster, and all the stuff he has on YouTube. So the last time I ran into the Kayak Hipster in person, it was in August of 2023 at the Kayak USA event called the Michigan Training Camp, which takes place near Traverse City, Michigan. And he was there with some of his video gear, And I had a chance to, just for a short time, get him with a microphone and talk to him. And so this is, I think it's just before dinner on, maybe it was Saturday, at Michigan Training Camp. And we're behind the the, uh, lodge area where people are inside. You can hear some background noise. And it was just enough time to, to get him talking a little bit before other things had to go on. Because the things get rather busy at these events. And if you put off talking to someone before you know it, it's Sunday and people have to leave and go. And I think he he was leaving early Sunday morning to go drive somewhere. So I I didn't uh, have a chance to, let's say, Sunday afternoon postpone my interview until it was more relaxed time and the actual event had ended officially. But so so this is right during the event. And uh, this runs about 20 minutes. The Kayak Hipster. So, tell me about Kayak Hipster. Sure. Um, they say that you are the Kayak Hipster. So, the, so that the name is a running joke with my wife. Yeah. Um, so, I used to play in a band way back in the day. Yeah. And I was in like the band circuit in New York City. And so, when I was trying to come up with a name for the channel or whatever that I was going to do, my wife and I were laughing that maybe that would be a funny name, and right. then it stuck. And so, we went with it. But So, that's where it 
the name came from. It just want we wanted some. I wanted something that would, the name itself would be memorable to some extent, but we didn't realize that the joke would catch on and just become that. But that so that's where the name came from. But the the thing itself came from. Um, you know, when, when, when I met you, that was the yeah. first time I had been to any of the Kayak USA okay. events. Yeah. And that was at Hergif in right. New York a long time ago. And at the time, I was having a tough time uh, with what I had. So I got trained to be an instructor in kayaking. Uh -huh. And I started doing a bunch of events and, you know, working And where without. did you start kayaking? So I started, my wife and I started uh, with recreational kayaks in lakes in New York and Pennsylvania okay. and New Jersey, and we fell in love with it. She got me into and it. Like what time period was this? This was back, you mean year? Yeah, like yeah year. Yeah. 20, earlier than 2010. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but then once we realized that we lived close to the ocean and we were near the Long Island Sound, we're like, hey, maybe we should get you know, maybe looking to sea kayaks. So, so, so then one summer we decided, because we always tried to maybe take a vacation together for the summer, and we thought, okay, this summer, let's take the money for a vacation instead, let's buy two sea kayaks. All right. And when we got sea kayaks, then we just looked up classes and we did, you know, rescues and recoveries, we did rolling, all this stuff. And I fell in love with it and that's when I, started getting instruction to become an instructor myself because I just I love doing that stuff and professionally I do video photo work mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so it made sense for me to bring my camera to document trips and having fun and whatever right. but what I was noticing in some of the circles that I was paddling in was that sometimes newer paddlers felt intimidated by Sometimes, because, you know, when you get to higher level of kayaking, you really have to invest time, you have to invest, yeah. it's, it's effort, you have to train, some of the conditions can get rough. And I wanted it to be really inclusive for people that maybe just wanted to have fun, like out on a lake, in a regulation of the kayak. And all the stuff I was learning, I wanted to maybe bring that to people that, maybe they just went on YouTube. and. Right. Uh, and maybe they would be then interested in coming to events like what we were doing at Hergif, whatever, because maybe they thought, oh, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to build a kayak or I don't want to carve a paddle, but they would still be welcome to come and learn about it and have fun. And that was the vibe I got at the first time I went to Hergif. I had built a skin on frame. And once I was there, I realized why I had made all the wrong decisions and the uh -huh. actual skin from my maid. But it was great to meet so many people and so many people that were very um, dedicated. I remember on the Sunday when we were leaving, Peter, who still had such a long drive home, it was... Which Peter is this? Uh, Gengler? Peter Gengler, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... People had already been leaving. This was like two o'clock in the afternoon. And someone went up to him while I was talking. I was saying bye to him. Someone went up to him and said, hey, you know, what we were talking about with the roll, I didn't really get it. And he goes, okay, grab your kayak. Let's get back in the really? water. And at 2 p.m. on Sunday, he got back in the water to work with someone. I thought, this is what I, this is my crowd. Yeah. This is, because that's what I wanted to do. I uh -huh. wanted to be like. Let's do it. If if you're learning yeah. something new, let's bring it to everyone else. You know. Yeah. So and then obviously I was there, so excited to meet you and see everything right. you were doing and yeah. everything you were. That's the other thing too is, as a newbie, it was wonderful to see people that you had been doing it for so long and you were so open to sharing and teaching anybody, and it was yeah. wonderful to see that. So right. thank you. Yeah. Well, in in this in this part of the sport. We have big names, but they're all very approachable because it's not a big thing like, you know, it's something like golf or tennis. You can't even get close to the, the top stars. But in, in sea kayaking, Greenland sea kayaking, you can go up to guys and talk to them and hang out with them. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just it's awesome because there's just so much knowledge and everyone is open with sharing it. Mm -hmm. It's and you go to any of the events and it's 
everyone will stand in the water and when you approach them they'll say so what are you working on yeah, and there's no judgment on what you're working on right like yeah. sometimes I was in some groups that people felt afraid of asking questions even oh. just safety questions because they yeah. thought oh no you know they'll think less of me if I didn't know this already we're here people show up and it's like yeah awesome whatever you're doing we want to help you push that forward yeah. and that was that's always been awesome about yeah. these events so so on your your channel is yeah. called kayak hipster that's it it's, it's a it's a youtube it's channel? a youtube okay. but yeah all right and you got videos of all the various places you've gone and people yes and, and like it's like instructional stuff or just kind of so a little of everything. So I don't go into full instructional mm -hmm. stuff because I think usually it's just me. And okay. to do something really instructional, I think you need to have a couple of people. Someone yeah. with a camera, someone with good angles showing every single thing you're doing. So most of the time, my stuff is more just tips of, yeah. hey, next okay. time you're doing your forward stroke, here's three things that maybe right. can help. or. So I have that kind of stuff, and then I have stuff more like lots of different trips I've taken, oh, yeah. where I think it's super, super helpful to say, hey, there's this great event out on the West Coast. There's yeah. this great event out down in Florida. There's this great event, I mean, this one we're at now. Well, I, I, I must confess, I don't think I've been able to, I've looked at your site or something, but the, um, I would imagine, I can guess that, with the type of gear and the type of technique you're using, which it's why I stopped doing video and concentrate on audio because my <laughs> stuff all looks like junk. So, but you're it, using probably you've got a drone and you've got all kinds of. So toys. it use, but it's I do it professionally. Okay. So well, I remember right, the first time I came to see you, I yeah. I I had at that point I was in charge of like I, I was in this company where I was able to borrow all top level equipment and I okay. brought a huge bag full of stuff that. Yeah wasn't mine, but I wasn't going to get it wet, so it was fine. But yeah. um, but what I did find is a lot of times, if you spend a lot of time doing that stuff, then you're not doing, you're not really enjoying the festival, oh, or you're I not mentoring it, it yeah. right? Yeah. You, you uh -huh. have to pick your battles. Yeah, you're either going to be a photographer or you're going to participate. Right. Yep. That's yep. right. So yeah. over the years, what I've started doing is I'll go to an event where we beforehand agree okay Luke you're just gonna kind of stay in the back of the pack the entire time with your camera and okay, hang yeah. out and do things and one of the nice things about it too is we've shot footage that then we used to uh, look at what we're doing technique wise or whatever and we okay, review yeah. it in yeah. the evening oh, yeah. uh, let's say we're surfing yeah. and we see what we're doing then we're able to look at what we did because you know the camera doesn't lie it's yeah, nice yeah, to that, do that that's, that's very useful um, but yeah, you have to. What you're saying is exactly it. Sometimes, if if you're not spending the time on the gear, it's just not going to look or sound good or yeah. whatever. And that's okay. You got to pick your battles. Yeah. Like for this event, I just brought a little camera, and right. that's enough. Yeah. So how does this event, the Michigan Training Camp, compare yeah. to other things you've done, or what? What do you find oh, unique about this one? So this was awesome in that it feels like. A summer camp for adults yeah. that love kayaking it, it, right. it's awesome the group has been my expectations were this is a kayak usa event and it was exactly that it was inviting right. it was uh inclusive everyone come in and have fun uh will create classes around what people want mm -hmm. it's what do you guys want to learn today okay which coaches can there was not going to be surfing at all and then today two people said hey how about maybe surfing and all of a sudden we had we both went out yeah. it was a crowd 15, it went from 2 people. to 15 yeah. and it was awesome it was so much fun and I like that approach of student first yeah so we're, we're on Lake Michigan the yes. campus straddles a little lake and the big lake Lake Michigan yes and we can go right out there and find the waves yeah it was it was some good waves today really yeah it was it, it was to me it was weird i'm used to salt water so it was strange to see waves like that yeah. that didn't taste anything like what i'm used to <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah 
Have you got any any interesting projects coming up? Any places you're going to go? Any plans? For uh, I have a couple more events like this one. Uh, okay. What I've been doing a lot is since I moved to Savannah, uh, we've many times we'll try to set things up in Savannah, either you know near Tybee or where we get nice surf conditions. So we'll do rough water training mm -hmm. or maybe we'll do a week kind of event. And okay. so there's a couple of those um, in the next couple of months. So that, that should be fun. Um, mm -hmm. But no, no, nothing nothing really big. Someday I want to build another skin on frame, but right. not right now. Have you, have you cocked in other countries? Yes, uh, yeah, I've been to a couple of, uh, the, the, the one that stands out the most is Norway. I've uh -huh. gone twice. We, my wife and I did, uh, it was just like paddling and camping, which okay. was incredible. It was, we... One of the fjords in Norway? Yeah. 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 Right. We flew into Oslo, made our way just all around with a car and paddled everywhere we could and then to Trondheim and then we flew back. And then the second one was with a really great group. We did a circumnavigation of the southernmost island in uh, Lofoten Islands. Okay. And that was in the Arctic Circle during the summer, so we got to see the midnight sun. I had wow. never seen that before, and it All was right. so crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I used to get to do a lot more stuff, but since we had a kid, that kind of slowed right. down a lot. How old's the kid now? Eight. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. You put him in a kayak at all? <laughs> Yes and no. I don't want to. I don't want to push him away from it. Yeah, so yeah. when he's ready, I'm right. sure he'll but jump he's seen in with you. us. Oh yeah, yeah. And he likes it. And right. he had. We have a little. You know, a kid sit on top for him. So right. every so often we do some stuff. But yeah. but it's okay. I, I want him to do it with me whenever he wants to. I don't want to be like yeah. the dad that does it and then he's like, ah, oh, forget you, dad. Yeah. I'm gonna go play video games with my friends. <laughs> Any any uh, thoughts of going to Greenland to see the? I yes, I have it. The tough thing with Greenland is the amount of time you need to dedicate to a true trip, yeah. and that's also a thing that you wouldn't be able to go for a short time. Yeah. Uh, so because of family stuff, I think it'll be something that's on the list for sure, but in the future. Yeah. And I would also really love going with someone that knows it. it well because yeah. um, what I've discovered from just traveling what one of the nice things is the online community is people will welcome you uh, to go visit their place and then show you their backyard paddling stuff mm -hmm. and that's been the best way to discover places yeah. it's like it's I mean anytime someone comes to Savannah I'm like yeah I'm gonna take you everywhere it's the same thing yeah. just yeah but someday yeah that'd be amazing yeah Iceland too. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite piece of gear? Oh, that's really tough because I want to say camera, but <laughs> well, I, I, if you got a good camera that works really well for you, tell us about it. Uh, no, 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 it keeps changing because yeah. nowadays phone cameras are so useful and so good that yeah, yeah. it's. I used to have both. Like for example, we went on this trip to that circumnavigation in in Norway. I took this amazing, expensive camera that I was able to borrow from work with two big, heavy lenses, and it stayed in the bottom of my kayak the entire week. It was too big and too heavy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I used my little one the entire time. Yeah. So, uh, you know what I'll say? I'll, uh, ben has made a paddle that I absolutely love. Ben he from, used to be from Savannah. Yes, ben. he moved away right when I His moved there. His last name is Fontenoy. Fontenoy, yeah. A paddle he carved is my yeah. favorite paddle to use. All so right. uh -huh. I'll say that. Have you, you've used carbon fiber paddles? Yes. But the, something about the wood, right? It's, yeah, uh, it, especially for surfing, it just yeah. feels really so forgiving. you surf with a Greenland paddle yes. as, a, as a standard yes. piece of equipment? Yes. Yeah. Whether it's the right tool or not, it feels right for me. I, it gives me confidence. I feel good rolling with it. So I know I need to start a little earlier. I know I need mm -hmm. to take a couple extra strokes. But I always feel really good with it in my hand. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I saw you today out there doing, it, doing quite it's well. It's all right. Yeah. I can hold my own. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, it is just about. I'm waiting for the bell to ring because that signals it's dinner time. But uh, they're, they're a little slow. Can I ask right. you what what 
Can you tell me a highlight from this event from so far? Today? Yeah. Um, I've had such a blast. I mean, they've, they've, they've had me working hard. I, they have. Doing the yoga in the morning. Yes. I did the presentation last night. <laughs> you did. I did the um, rolling demonstration today. Yeah, and you kept yeah. hitting either your head or the paddle on the, because well, it's, yeah, the it's super so shallow. shallow. Yeah, I, mean, I was scraping. My nah, head. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful yeah. and clear. And, and we, we've had some good ropes stuff going on. We've people signing up for private ropes 101 instruction. And then you actually went out surfing. Yeah, and I, went, and I got some surfing in, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I've had a great time myself. So can I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. What is it like having, you know, being, at least, you know, in the U.S., being a pillar of traditional paddling? Is it, what is it like when people approach you about well, it? Because... I, sometimes I feel that, I, that my reputation gets greater than my skills. You know, I, right? I disagree here's a big completely. Name. So obviously this guy knows all how to surf, knows every single part of kayaking, and, and I don't. You know, I, I, I can roll a kayak. I've never built a kayak from start to finish, and right. I surf. I'm, a, I'm an amateur, and et cetera. So sometimes I, I, I get, maybe I get intimidated because people think that I'm the, the big deal. Um, so, so there's that. But I'm 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 overjoyed to be able to you know help people understand more about Greenland stuff and where it comes from and so that's I'm I'm honored to be able to do that. I what what strikes me most from from my perspective and now you know having known you for years and seeing having been to several events together. Okay. Just. Usually people try to put you in the advanced classes always for a role because yeah. you're yeah. one of the only people that can do a lot of the yeah, advanced right. stuff or even teach it, yeah. right? So, but I love it whenever you're just able to stand around and everybody comes to you and yeah. just giving like little, like when when Tim was uh, giving me, uh, when because so with that, that um, what do you call it? The, the storm roll. He gave me homework years ago. Oh, there's the bell. Yep. Okay, last story. Right. Uh, when when Tim gave me homework on my storm roll years ago, and then I saw you, and in five minutes you're like, no, just open your left hand, and then it worked. Right. I had been working on that for so long, but you know, you have an eye for all that, obviously. Well, you've no, been doing see, it. people people have a good experience and think I'm the man and know everything, but I'm not nearly as good as people think I'm. But and half but, the instructors here. Are, are good or better than I am sure. at the rolling stuff. Sure. However, and everybody in the beginners in their mind think, well, it's dub side, you know. But they could go, they get just as good instruction from so many other. Sure, here. but I, but I, what I think hits for me is you've seen and taught so many people that you have experience with sometimes being able to zero in on sometimes, one thing, sometimes. right? Yeah. But when you do, it's yeah. super helpful. And, but, it's but, and, and I'll tell you, I've, I've, at sometimes where, I've, where I'm at for the summer, I wasn't traveling. So I had a couple, I had three people come to, for instruction. And, you know, you want to get them. They, they were, I think they all hadn't had a role before. Right. I didn't get a single role out of any uh, of them. So those, those are humbling experiences yeah, yeah. and bring you back down to earth. I mean, you try your best. Yeah. yeah. You give them some insight and send them on the way saying, this is a, you made a step in the process. But, you, you know, you want them to get that role. But... but Look, last thing for me is a lot of times in the in the few times you've given me advice, sometimes I might not be able to do something when you tell me, but right. maybe months later as I yeah. work towards it, yeah. then it'll click because finally yeah. it did something that makes sense. Right. So yeah, well, that's just something to think about. If, if someone doesn't get it immediately, they might oh, yeah, still. Yeah. I, I, I try to give said. enough in their head so yeah. they'll, they'll be able to teach themselves eventually. All right. Should we go eat? Thank you very much. Let's oh, eat. thank you, Dubside. Appreciate it. And that is The Kayak Hipster. Look up kayakhipster.com or Kayak Hipster YouTube channel. Lots of good information from a very nice guy. So we're going to end a little early this time. But thank you for listening to the Dubcast with Dubside.